Welcome into the DMVR Broncos podcast. I'm Henry Chisholm. That's Todd Davis. And uh, we've got some more news today. And I think that this is this is some sad news. The, the kickoff rule that was proposed, it was approved. Kickoffs are totally different now. We're now copying the XFL. <laughs> That's the league that we've turned into. Um, yeah, I just don't see the exciting like kickoff returns happening the same way they used to. I think when you condense yeah. the field like that, it's less of a chance for them to break a return. I think that when you do, you know, get a, a touchdown run back for or a kickoff run back for touchdowns because of spacing. Yeah, you create levels exactly by the kickoff return team that then you know the returner is able to find. Now everybody's only what is it, fifteen twenty yards away from the returner. I think that's not enough space to create levels. You would know as the Super Bowl 50 Broncos special teams captain. Just a little bit. Not Just a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, but I mean, it, <laughs> yeah. I hadn't even thought of that, though, where, I mean, you're supposed to stay in your lane as you run down the field. Uh huh. But over the course of that, what, like 40 yards before you can even get close to the returner? Guys don't. Exactly. And that's what creates the lanes. That is interesting. I'm curious. I'm curious what it'll look like. Because I, w- I, w- I still wouldn't be surprised if you wind up with the return just being kind of overpowered. Uh-huh. Like if it turns out that – because they can't move until you touch the ball. The guys in front of you got blocked for like a couple seconds. I almost wonder, like, are you tempted to put like Garrett Bowles out there as one of your blockers since he's only starting five yards away? I mean – It's worth a conversation at least. I mean, you would think about – I mean, they used to use o linemen back in the day, like in the wedge. It's true, yeah. Those big bodies. I mean, nobody wanted like to run full, full speed. Yeah, he'd be a monster back oh. there. Nobody wanted to run full speed in a Garrett Bowles just sitting there waiting for you. So, I mean, I think a lot of things will change. Definitely. I don't know if o linemen <laughs> in the front, front uh, 10 will be the best suggestion, but I think a lot of things will change. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I guess we might as well just repeat what this rule change is. We talked about it a little bit yesterday when I honestly didn't think it would go through just because it's so crazy. Yeah. Um, but the way it works is the kicker still kicks from the 35-yard line. The kick team lines up at the 40, but like across midfield, so 20 yards away, 25 yards away. Um, nine, te- nine players from the return team line up between the 30 and 35, so they're 5 to 10 yards from the kick team and the other two guys are deep to return the ball. So when you kick the ball, um, first of all, it can't be touched until, uh, or nobody can move until the ball is touched by the returner. Um, If you don't get the ball to the 20 yard line, or if it goes out of bounds, the return team gets the ball at the 40. At the 40? At the 40. So out of bounds kick, or if you kick it short of the 20 yard line, you get the ball at the 40. So it's basically like out of bounds if you kick it to inside the 20. Yes. That's okay. crazy. Um, if it lands between the 20 and the end zone, so basically like in the red zone, you have to return it. If you don't return it and it bounces into the end zone, then the touchback goes to the 20. So it's like the old touchback. But if the kick lands in the end zone, so you kick it all the way through the red zone into the end zone and – First of all, you could return it, or you can kneel, and you get the ball at the 30. So, in theory, if you're a returner and they kick it in the end zone, you want to kneel um, because you get the ball at the 30. So, the kicker kicker should be trying to drop it at, like, the three-yard line to make them return it. It's it's going to be really strange. And the other piece of this is the onside kicks obviously don't work from this lineup. The only time you can try an onside kick is in the fourth quarter, and then you just line up like an actual kickoff is lined up. This is so complicated. I just feel like it's unnecessary. And I feel like I don't know why returning it would be a, a, a plus. If I was the return team, I'm going to try my hardest to get it out of bounds or in Definitely. the end zone. Because if the guys are already lined up at the 40, I think it's very rare that they're going to get a return, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, past the 25-yard line. Yeah. So it just would be better just to kneel every single time and get it at the 30. It's going to be – it's going to be hard. I feel like yeah. it's going to be hard for kickers to put that much backspin on the ball. Exactly. It's easier to do with punts because you're holding the ball. Uh. And so you can backspin it as you kick it. Yeah. Versus when you're kicking off a tee, that momentum uh-huh. is carrying it through. Because you can't, like, kick the back of it. Yeah, you can't kick. Like, it's like hard to kick fr- underneath yeah. it exactly. and have it come, like, forward and backward at the same time. Yeah. So you, so if you're the kicker, you don't want the ball to land in the end zone. Uh-huh. You also don't want it to land at, like, the 
the the 19 because then it's just an easy return from right there because exactly. nobody's been able to move in front of you. So, like, you must be aiming for, like, the five-yard line. Yeah. But you're kind of screwed if you kick it too hard. Oh, I guess you're also screwed if you don't kick it hard enough. That's going to turn into a weird skill for kickers. Like, who can consistently just put the ball just at, like, kick the it. three? Yeah. The three every single time. And I'm... I'm I'm curious. So the other piece of this is, so obviously they want more kick returns. They're finding ways to incentivize people to, to return kicks. Um, and they say this will reduce injuries, which makes sense. There's less running into each other. Um, last year, the XFL team, so they use these same rules. The XFL team that returned the fewest kicks returned twice as many kicks per game as the NFL team that returned the most kicks. So you're probably, everybody's going to be... Re- doubling up the number of returns, probably closer to three times as much, maybe f- four times as many, especially because the skill of the kicker is probably going to force them to return more than the XFL kickers who could be putting that ball anywhere. I wonder how many yards they got. Can you see like what the average amount of yards per yeah. kick return was? Yeah, I can do that. I'm be- curious. Because I think that matters too. Because if we return more kicks just to return them for 10 yards apiece – What's the point? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So I'll be interested to see what those numbers are. Yeah. Um, Let's see. I got total kick. That was a kick return touchdowns. I don't have yards on this. How many kick return touchdowns? Um, One in the entire league. That's what I'm talking about. Do you know who did it? Who? The San Antonio Brahmas. Ah, (laughs) nice. Yeah. Um, I, it's I think, going to it's going to be strange because you also just have like freak athletes as returners. Like if if you're the Dolphins, you probably consider like, do we put Tyreek Hill back there, like just to see what happens? And see what happens. Yeah. Wait before we go to yeah. too far. Uh, shout out to the Brahmas. I think uh, Cody Latimer plays for really uh, the Brahmas. No yeah. way. I wonder if he, he plays tight that in. That's and he's like one of the best in the league. He's killing it. It makes sense that he so would be shout great out to at Cody. That. You know. Yeah. Shout out. Um, Cody. He's been there a while too. Yeah, he's been there a couple years. Yeah. He's been there a couple of years, doing good. Uh, okay. But yeah, I think it's gonna it's gonna get tricky. It's gonna get creative. I think a lot of special teams guys, especially coaches, are gonna try to implement. You know, coaches try to bend as many rules as possible. So they're gonna try and there's gonna be a lot of you know try and fail. I feel like within the first year for sure. Yeah. So the leading kick returner was Puka Williams. Okay. From, he might, I think from Kansas. If I remember right, it's it's a fun list of names here because you're like, oh, I kind of remember that guy. Uh-huh. Um, Puka Williams, 10 returns, 27.3 yard average. Okay. But the other important piece is where you're catching it. Yeah, so if you're catching it at the 5 or getting at the 32 every time? Yeah. If you're catching it at the 10, then that's pretty good. But I don't even, I don't think, I don't even know if anybody tracks where the kick lands uh-huh. on average versus the return yeah yeah there's going to be some some stat nerds going to figure this out and i think the well, first of all um we'll, we'll have zach on to talk about because i know sean payton talked about this a little bit yeah um but i found some quotes from some other coaches like uh a dan campbell said what is people what has people spooked about it is unknown but oh no what has people spooked about it is the unknown and that's what excites me Hmm. Because it is kind of like this new world of, like, you've, you, you've got to come up with a plan, you know? Like, there's so many different ways to do this. Um, luckily, I think for the Broncos, you have Mike Westoff here, who was the first ever NFL special teams coordinator. I can't remember the exact things that he's invented, but a bunch of the kind of common techniques that, that are used across the league came from him either back in the 70s or the 80s or whenever that was. So to have somebody who's been kind of a revolutionary game planner, like a tactic builder when it comes to these sorts of things, it will be interesting to see what he comes up with because I know that they're going to be trying all sorts of different things. Yeah. And I don't know for somebody like that if, if he would be upset that kickoffs are changing. I know he was upset that they changed the kickoffs to mean that they like barely anybody returns because they moved where you kick from and they changed the, the where the touchback goes to. But is this something that he is happy about or but I don't know. The other thing is Andy Reid said uh, you have two thousand dead plays, people don't want to see that, coaches don't want to coach that, players don't want to play that, make a change. Which it is true that that was I mean nothing really happened on kickoffs. Which sucks. But I'm not this is a crazy way to address that problem. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I think it was the league's fault that things stopped happening. Yeah. You know, the rule changes that they made before are what caused people not to return the kick. Mm-hmm. And so I'm looking at this diagram now. Um, I don't know if we can pull it up for people to see, like, the new kickoff diagram. And it's just I don't understand. <laughs> There's too many bodies in this short area of space. You know what I'm saying? It's weird. Because normally on a kickoff, some blocks happen at the 30. Other blocks happen at the 20, uh-huh. 25. Like, you get levels, right? Like we talked about earlier. Everybody is literally starting at the 40. So even if you're Tyree kill fast and you catch the ball at the 5, you get to the 15. Yeah. Maybe 20 yard line before somebody's there. Yeah, so that's the new uh Yeah, there's the graphic. new diagram graphic <laughs> for the kickoff and I think there's just so many bodies. So there's, and there's so much happening here. So much happening. So much happening. Yeah. But I mean, uh, I would be tempted to put Quinn out there right in the middle. Like if if you But know, he still has to set up. It does have to set up. So he's he's now he's 5 yards away from 5 yards. a safety or a linebacker. So he has to be able to run back fast enough and turn around to set up. Are you even running backwards, though? You have to. Even I, from I there? Think you would. You, you don't just play forward from there? Like, these are the decisions that the could. coordinators are going to have to Yeah, to I guess answer. you could. So then, I guess you don't have to run back and set up anymore. And then you could almost have, like, okay, you got, you got Quinn maybe in the middle. All, you almost have somebody's job to funnel a guy to him, you know? Like angle the defense in that direction the attack like i think they're just gonna run around them ex- it's yeah. only five yards Le- you at least like when you were the kickoff team or the kick return team and you were fast enough to get back you started off with 10 yards of space mm-hmm. and then you just outran the guy so you either kept the 10 yards of space or maybe got to 12 to 15 by the time you turned around you had time to like see where the ball was kicked yeah you had time to like position an angle based off where we were returning the ball uh-huh and then you also had time to like get set up to, you know, be ready for this impact because this guy's running full speed and I got to stop his momentum. Yeah, and it now is. Now all of that's cut down to, like, instant. <laughs> it's different than, like, a run play also. Like, you can have a power where you pull Quinn through the hole, but that almost tees up, like, a, a safety or a linebacker for him uh-huh. because they have to be in the hole because that's where the run's going. So, like, they have to kind of wait right there for him to come through and clear him out. It's a little bit different on a kick return where – you can just run around. I can him just run around you, and then space you, exactly because you're not trying to plug the hole up. And that's why I feel like they'll still have to set up because they don't know where we're kicking the ball. True. So I don't know where their return is set up, but we could kick it to the right side, and then everybody just you know avoids right and tries to go get them. So I think you still have to somewhat get back, turn yeah. around, find the ball. But if you can't move until the ball is kicked, either <laughs> everybody's just stuck. Yeah. Everybody's just up. Yeah, Adam Schefter tweeted out one uh one kick return from the XFL this season. Yep. Like you have like Look how many guys are, are those there. are those pullers right there? Is the guy is one guy like, just like back. turning around? Like there's just weird things happening in here. Well, I think they're going man to man. It just gets kinda like okay. muddled up. Yeah, I guess man to man does make sense. Because you're just lined up across from a guy. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, don't know. know. Like, it will be interesting because I w- like it would make sense for all these plays just to die right a- right around the twenty five. Right around twenty five. Like that line. would be my bet, but but at least something's happening. I guess is exactly. what they're saying. Like, I also wouldn't be surprised if like the freak athlete returners that the NFL has make something happen. Yeah, especially when you've got like just the caliber of athlete that is typically on special teams. Like, you're not going to have Cortland Sutton on special teams. Like, you're not going to have Pat Stan special teams. Like, it's kind of the, the, your reserve guys. I don't and know. You still, you, that's the thing. You're you almost some tempted. Pre- you have some pretty talented and fast players on special teams sometimes, too. Yeah. Like, I mean, you think about, like, that, those backup corners. Some of those, sometimes those will be the fastest guys on the field. But if you've got Tyreek Hill back there returning. But you just need space. He needs space. You do. So I'm, if I'm a special teams coordinator, I'm kicking it to the middle of the field every single time. I'm not doing any quarter kicks because then you have less bodies. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So there's more of an opportunity. I'm kicking in the middle of the field and then just condensing everybody every single time and having oh, two safety wow. players fold in the middle and everybody else just funnel to the middle. That makes sense. You almost, you almost worry about, like, the gaps, you know? 
Because, like, if one of these guys goes to the right of his man and the guy next to him goes to the left, uh-huh. all of a sudden, that's, that's a massive crease. Yeah. Well, that's why you have the safeties. Okay. I don't know. Okay, real quick. I heard Zach is here, but we're going uh, gonna to shout out a couple of our friends before we uh, get his thoughts on all these changes. First of all, Bet365, like I said uh, yesterday, it's a big time for Bet365, and it's going to continue to be a big time for Bet365 all the way through, <clears throat> I mean, June. Forever. And the Nuggets and that. And that, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're a baseball fan, then that patches the gap until you get preseason football in August, which is where the real betters shine. Um, the real, real ball knowers figure out who those third string quarterbacks are. Um, oh, also Broncos not in the Hall of Fame game. There was a chance since they have a Hall of Famer, but nope. Um, Thank God. If you guys want to sign up, you can use the code DMVR three six five. Deposit ten dollars and choose between either a bet and get offer, where you place a bet of five dollars or more and get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets, or a first bet safety net offer by placing a bet up to a thousand dollars. And if your qualifying bet loses, you receive a matched refund and bonus bets. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet three six five. Uh, must be 21 or older and physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. And you also must be 21 or older to enjoy some Coors Light. Uh, check out our friends at Coors Light. It's the beer that keeps you chill and is made to chill. So when you're done juggling family and work and, you know, had a long week, make sure you grab a Coors Light because it's literally made to chill. Um, and that's the beer I grab when I'm ready to chill. So, so when you want to hit a reset, grab a beer that is made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com forward slash DMVR. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company in Golden, Colorado. All right. Uh, Zach should be here. Let's see. There he is. There's half his face. Of course I'm here, fellas. Oh. Coors there Light, that's all to uh, complete this total chill sesh. There wow. it is. Wow. How so how, you, how was last night, man? Can you give us any details or are you, like, keeping it on the low? It was, uh, it was awesome. The NFL knows how to throw a party, and it was actually a pretty sur- – it's a pretty surreal party because they're, they're just, like, um, own, every owner's there, every head coach is there, every general manager is there, and then they're kind enough to allow the media – just to be there as well. So pretty, um, pretty surreal. I know the Broncos starting quarterback. Um, I know all of their plans guys. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. That's good stuff. Um, there were some rule changes today. Is that, is that really all the big news that came out from, uh, from, from Orlando today? Yeah. Just, uh, just got done with, uh, commissioner Goodell as, uh, the Broncos owner that's would say, right. Uh, just got done with his press conference, and yeah, that that's the biggest thing that's coming out of this week is just the rule changes, which are actually are quite uh, a lot. And if I understand um, your guys' feelings on it, you hate every single rule change, and I understand why. Um, the hip drop tackle, the kickoffs, I think those are the two big ones. Um, and uh, Goodell said that with hip drop tackle, um all they care about not all they care about but what they care about is the player safety and that has like that play has they, what they said was 20 times higher injury rate and so they said if there's any play like that they're going to eliminate it um and make it finable and make it penalized and i understand where they're coming from um but then at the same time then you put in other things and changes like playing on a wednesday um and having uh, three games in like a 50 or an 11 day span for players. Uh, it's just not exactly consistent. Um, but the way Goodell addressed that was we've done this in the past. We have that Sunday to Thursday turnaround, Saturday to Wednesday turnaround is no different. So they're taking the approach that this is nothing different. Um, and that this is only something that's going to happen in terms of the Wednesday games when Christmas falls on a Wednesday, which is, I don't know, every six years or something. Um, so uh, that's the approach that they're taking with that. Okay, yeah. cool. How does, uh, from last night, could you kind of gauge how the owners felt about the new rules? Were they happy with them? Did they feel like they wanted them to change? Or what's, what's like the overall consensus from the group there? Yeah, I think uh, when it comes to the hip drop, um, the owners are on the exact same page. The Broncos owners, uh, as well as owners in the NFL, are on the same page as Goodell. 
Um, just that 20 times, I think that's really what they, they, they heard the 20 times more likely that it's uh, to, to be an injured, to get injured on a play like that. And they just bought into that. I think it was a very simple decision for them when they heard that number um, to ban it. I think it's going to be really difficult for players. Like now you not only have to have good form, but you have to have good tackling form in front of a guy. If a guy gets behind you, like good luck bringing him down. And yeah. that happens all the time, as you know, Todd, where a player uh, gets by you or you catch him from as behind. You know. And that's going to be really tough to, to tackle a guy now. Um, and in terms of the, the kickoff rules, I know. What did I say? No, he, he, you just said. I mean, no, guys you're are getting by Todd all the time. You're just setting it, setting them up. I know you didn't mean it like that. that you know what I'm saying? Ty, guys getting by Todd all the time. Acting like I was chasing people my whole career <laughs> in coverage. No, 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 in no Todd. Todd, you're just so fast that you would catch up to guys. That's all I'm saying. I know. They got by you, yeah. It wasn't my fault. I was just trying to help somebody else. I, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. You were the you were the cleanup guy who would come in and help. Um, and in terms of the, the kickoff rules, I understand you guys don't like it. Um, it's going to look weird as hell, but it's actually probably an advantage for the Broncos with mm -hmm. Marvin Mims right now. They have one of the best returners in the game, and I believe only 14% of kickoffs were returned in Denver last year, which you have one of the best returners, if not the best returner in the game, yet he's neutralized because he's only able to be used 14% of the time during your home games. This will allow more opportunity for Marvin Mims. And if he really is that difference maker that I think we all have seen flashes of, um, then this is actually good news for the Broncos. It's going to look weird as hell for years. Um, it, but it's going to give more opportunities and the teams that have that dynamic returner. So I actually, I mean, the kickoff in the way Sean Payton put it was the, the PAT before they moved it back was like 99% success rate. What are we doing? Even doing a play that has a 99% success rate, let's change it up or honestly just eliminate it. So I kind of like that they, ch that they change this, um, either change it or eliminate it. Just do something. Cause it, it's honestly kind of stupid when it's that that low of a success or uh, uh, return rate. So I think for the Broncos, this is actually potentially good news. Well, I think the even better part for the Broncos, like it's great having Marvin Mims, but we talked about before, having Mike West off is probably even more valuable. Like having a special teams rule change and having him in there to figure out who to put out there and what the strategy is. And like, I, it's going to be interesting because every team is going to approach this differently, at least for the first half of the season before some some better strategies kind of filter out but i don't know it'll zach, be strange zach how is how is this not offsides there is no other play in football where everybody can line up ahead of where the ball is snapped <laughs> how does this even make sense that should be offsides on all 10 players that are lined up on the 40 yard line man Kadarius tony's really gonna have a word with the nfl about this he's gonna be like i was three <laughs> inches off sides everyone else is 25 yards off sides right exactly. now exactly uh, no you're right and it it looks so weird and i think it's like never not going to look weird and speaking of the the kickoffs the onside kick they did not eliminate that but i believe you do have to declare it now um, which means no more surprise onside kicks by the Broncos, specifically Sean Payton. If this rule were in effect last year, maybe the Broncos beat the Raiders because they don't start the season off with a, uh, a failed surprise onside kick. Yeah, it's kind of like when they moved the extra point back, there was no more like fake kick two-point conversions. Mm -hmm. It's all just like from under center because they know it's coming. It's it's strange. I just don't like change. Also, like, if you're going to do this, what's the point of even having somebody kick it? Like, you could really do whatever you want there. Why is he in the lineup at the 35? Like, throw a quarterback in at the 50 and have him just throw the ball where he wants. Or, like, you could have punt. Like, the whole kicking aspect really, I don't know. It's just kind of strange to have him all alone back there. I really do hope that eventually, um, instead of an onside kick, it does go to, like, that 4th and 15, 4th and 20, 4th and 25 from your own side. Um, because I would just, that, that's so much more interesting. It's so much more exciting. It's so much more of a football play. Um, Special now, teams are football. Would, that, <laughs> that would be like the opposite 
of uh, helping the Broncos out because that would really benefit the teams that have quarterbacks. And obviously the Broncos aren't in that situation now, but I would personally like if we're messing with all this stuff let's and, and we're making it so you can't do surprise on side kicks so people know when they're coming. Um, I, I would really like that rule change. I know you hate it, Henry, but yeah. I would like it. That's not Spe- football. Speaking of quarterbacks, I know you've been there around a lot of owners, a lot of GMs, a lot of head coaches. Is there anyone else that you've kind of heard through the grapevine is really loving J.J. McCarthy and really has him on his radar besides the Denver Broncos? Yeah, crazy enough, this guy just keeps shooting up draft boards to uh, the last time I think we kind of had this in-depth conversation. It was like, man, he's going to be the fourth quarterback drafted, but where we kind of had him was like in the top six picks is where J.J. was going to go. There's been a lot of buzz here that he could go number two overall oh my behind gosh. only behind Caleb Williams. He's like legitimately picking up steam for that, whether it's to the commanders, um, who I've heard a lot of rumblings that they actually really like him, um, or a team trades up for J.J. McCarthy. Like every single year we go into a draft process and we hear uh, or, and we just know that some quarterback is going to shoot up boards. This one might be like outside of Baker Mayfield, J.J. McCarthy might be shooting up draft boards more than we've ever seen. Um, Again, like outside of Baker Mayfield, who went from like a borderline first round pick to the number one overall pick. J.J. McCarthy has now jumped over like everyone outside of Caleb Williams. So this are the Broncos going to get him at 12? We knew that wasn't the case a couple of weeks ago. Are the Broncos going to be able to get him even if they wanted to trade everything for him like everything i'm talking three first round picks and like pats or ten there's a chance that they they that wouldn't even get them jj mccarthy because if the commanders are set on him at two then he's off the board there so does that mean that drake may slides i don't really think from from what sean has said publicly and from kind of what i picked up i don't think drake may is a is a broncos type of quarterback that they would take a gamble on but if that means that Jaden Daniels slips, let's say to four, five, or six, I could see Jaden Daniels. That's kind of something that I've picked up here is the two guys that I think Sean Payton can or has fallen in love with is JJ McCarthy and Jaden Daniels. Now we're talking about maybe two of the first three picks in the draft, so it might just be too hard to get those guys anyways, but I really think that's who, if it's going to be a drafted quarterback for the Broncos in a trade up, those are the two guys it would be. Yeah, that's all crazy. I mean, we the thing the way it works is it feels like McCarthy's moving up the draft boards, but that's just like from the media perspective because everything through the end of the season is just what the media thinks of every of everybody. So at that point media is like, "Well, he's like a fringe first round pick." And then after that is when the coaches and front offices like study and research and then The end, like February and March is when they're like telling their media buddies like, hey, here's what we actually think. And that's when all the media people are like, oh, we were wrong. He's actually up here, not down here. So. So you're saying that to say that it is credible because it's coming from the coaches after reviewing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I mean, yeah, I think everything everything is just media guesses up until like at least the end of January. And then after that, it's like the people who actually make the decisions are starting to leak things out. And now we've hit the point where everybody's having meetings. And so the fact that he has like this other little bump right after he has meetings with all these teams, like, Oh, those must've gone well. So uh, anything, anything else crazy out there, Zach, before we let you go, man, I'm getting a little sunburn out here. It's, oh, uh, no. it's a little too warm right so now. I should have brought you. my sunglasses. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know if I'm going to make it back tomorrow, guys. Oh no. You going to Disney world? Um, our hotel was right across from SeaWorld, so maybe I should stop there. I didn't realize that SeaWorld had, like, rides. There, It's like yeah. a whole, uh, yeah, I just assumed it was, like, uh, I didn't and realize it was more, like, and tiny closures. Yeah. Yeah, then it was, like, I just thought it was, uh, animals. I thought it was just, like, a water zoo. Yeah, no, now that's you a good check it out. You got You should see Animal Kingdom, too. The Disney World do you Park. Think DN, do you think DNBR will would push my flight back, get me a hotel room for another night, and I don't know, Nick and I hop can on the hop content. on the Pinner Pinner Jet coming back. Yeah, it's easy. Really good. You know what? I, I guess I didn't do a good enough job of mixing last night because I did not get the invite on the private jet. 
Wow. You're going to see like Leggy and everybody on the jet on the way back while you're just flying Frontier. Yeah, that uh, that would that would be depressing. That would be depressing. All right. Thanks, Zach. We will uh, we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Sounds good. See you guys. All right. Good stuff from Zach, as always. Um, he had he had more to say than than he let on when he was texting us this morning. He made it sound like there was nothing. I, I don't know. Maybe you saw that. I felt like he always has good information. You know? <laughs> All right. Um, real quick, shout out to our friends over at, uh, how about Red Hawk Roofing? I don't personally own a home, but I do live under a roof, and I could only imagine how much I would hate if that roof was not good. Uh-huh. Um, we had, like, that storm yesterday. Was that yes? the day before yesterday? day before yesterday. There was, like, some snow, a lot of rain. Not having a good roof could have been terrible, and that's why you want to get ahead of all of your roofing issues. Um, Red Hawk Roofing, they're the best roofers in Colorado, and they've joined the DMVR team. They're actually here at the bar maybe for Thursday's basketball games. They're, like, in between jobs, so I got to meet a couple of those guys. Um, They have cool, like, shirts they wear when they go roofing. Um, Quality materials, decades of experience, quick response time, uh, huge supporters of us, which we really like. Um, They will give you a free, no-obligation roof and property inspection with free in-depth photo reports for all their inspections. And uh, hail season is coming, so don't wait. I forgot about hail season. Hail mm. is the worst. Thank goodness my car's in a parking garage now. Uh, hopefully with a good roof. Um, they will give you a free upgrade to a hail impact resistant shingle if you decide to roof with them. So if you're looking for a new roof over your home or business, be sure to check out Red Hawk Roofing at redhawkroofing.com and tell them DNVR sent you. Shout out to our friends over at Premier Member Credit Union. Uh, there's a lot of financial institutions out there, but here's the one I want you to remember. Premier Members Credit Union. They're not a bank, which means they do things differently, like putting their members first with higher saving interest and lower loan rates. Uh, This is an organization that serves the community and the Colorado community in particular. When you become a member at PMCU, you'll get $200. You just have to open a checking account and sign up for e-statements. It's that easy. This will be your best money move yet. Head Mm -hmm. to uh, becomepremier.com to find out more. Awesome. Um, if you're watching, make sure you give us a thumbs up too, um, because we do have we have a thumbs down right now, so we got to balance that out. Um, let's uh, let's get into our bracket here. That was for the uh, kickoff. That was for the ki- yeah. That was for the kickoff. kickoff that was not for I us. Um, oh, good, we got that thumbs up also. Um, so yesterday, actually, I got to see the results to see who won. Last I checked, the uh, Jared versus Joe Alt matchup was 51 to 49 mm, so let's race. see uh do we have the updated bracket here oh jared verse pulled it out over joe alt because i guess that's just a position of need i guess that explains it um today though we've got terry on arnold the cornerback from alabama going up against terry or <laughs> i almost said it again quinion mitchell the cornerback from toledo and uh this is gonna be an interesting one because Terry and Arnold is the higher seed. Mm-hmm. But I think right now I think right now Quinion Mitchell is a, a, a f- the favorite to actually be off the board before Terry and Arnold. You think so? I think so. Okay. I'll check the I'll check the sports book, see what they say. Yeah, let's see. I think Toledo is a good school, but you always gotta, you know, wonder who these guys are playing against. I mean, great players are everywhere. I'm talking about a I'm from Sac State, so not calling myself great. I'm just saying, like, Big Sky you know football. what I'm saying? You can see Big Sky football. You can see Toledo football. So uh, I think Terry and Arnold has been on the top of the leaderboard for a long time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as the draft progresses, guys move up or slide down based off, you know, more critiquing of film. But I think he's a very solid player. And him and Pat on the same team, there's a lot of chemistry there. Uh, I think it would be a great fit. Yeah. I think he'd be awesome, too. Um Real quick, so Bet365 doesn't have first cornerback to be drafted, but they do have first defensive player drafted. Uh, Dallas Turner is the favorite, minus yep. 200. Number two, Quinion Mitchell, plus 350. Then Jared Verse, plus 600. Terry and Arnold, plus 1,000. Um, Leatu Latu, Byron Murphy, Chop Robinson, Cooper DeGene. Um, it kind of goes on from there. We as One of these days, we need to go through because um, they have, you know, the team to draft players. So... Bo Nix, for example, the Broncos are plus 200. Heavy favorites to be drafting Bo Nix, but we'll run through those some other time. So yeah, Quinnon Mitchell seems to have jumped in front, which is interesting. Um, 
Let's see, you hate when I say that he's the longer athlete. Um, so I'll just say, like, just lanky. Uh-huh. The arms, they just, like, extend forever and gets his hands on so many balls. Like, he's just kind of like a spindly <laughs> type of athlete, whereas Terry and Arnold is, uh, can't say he's long. Um, Terry and Arnold is, like, strong, a little uh-huh. bit stouter, um, built out a little more. I mean, there's kind of different kinds of players. Like, Terry and Arnold, that burst forward, I think is really what stands out. Gets his hands on a bunch of passes. Um picks off a bunch of passes as well. Whereas Quinion Mitchell, just the way he's built and the speed he has is more of just like a run with a receiver, kind of blanket him and don't let any balls through. Um, so they're, they're different styles of players, but Quinion Mitchell might be more of your kind of lockdown type just because of that build and because of the um, length of his arms and legs, to be specific. Um, whereas Terry and Arnold, again, like across from Pat Sertan could be really tempting because he, he wants to get downhill and get his hands on the ball, and mm-hmm. he's going to get a lot of opportunities to do that with Pat on the other side. Yeah. I think, I think we need uh, him to take some chances. Pat's so sticky in coverage. Mm-hmm. They rarely even throw to his side, so I think they'll try and test the young buck if he comes into the league. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think he wants to make big plays. He wants to make splash plays. So I think it will be very, very beneficial. But cornerback versus cornerback, we're talking about you know, maybe number four overall exactly. versus number eight overall. I think it's either way we go with this pick. I think we would be happy. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. You really can't go wrong. Um, yeah, five interceptions for Terry and Arnold last year. Twelve pass breakups. Also has a sack, a forced fumble. The production really is pretty crazy. Um, I don't know. I'd be curious. Would you, at this point, would would you be upset if they take a cornerback here? Um, maybe so. I think I would be. Maybe so. Yeah. I want a quarterback. I've hit the point where I just want a quarterback. I do. I want a quarterback or somebody on offense. I think our defense, you know, it showed you that we could win with who we had on the field. Yeah. You know, I ne- I didn't necessarily love like the play of everybody at different times throughout mm-hmm. the year, but they showed you that they played together. They could be very, very successful as a defense. Yep. Offense throughout the entire year, we needed more. So I think mm-hmm. we need somebody that's not a quarterback. It has to be an offensive player and specifically offensive weapon. So yep. that's where my mindset is. Yeah. I uh, So I forgot to bring this up yesterday, but it was maybe my favorite quote from Sean Payton. He was asked, like, have you heard the, the angst from the fan base that's going on right now? And he said, I would rather the angst be now rather than in September and October. He's not wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, it is a really frustrating time, and it feels like there's not much of – Maybe the, there is a direction, but the direction is kind of just like down before we can go back up. Sometimes teams just kind of surprise you. And if they go out there and start three and one, they're in the conversation we'll to just go. You'll be surprised for sure. <laughs> You'll be surprised. We'll be surprised. But, but sometimes that happens. Like you don't necessarily need the perfect football team to make the playoffs. You know, it's tough to get through in the AFC and it feels really hard because the Broncos haven't gotten through in so long, but... You got to go play the games. And you do have, like, if Cortland Sutton just goes out there and catches a couple touchdowns week one, you're right in it. Pat Sertan has a pick. You're probably favored to win that game, you know? Yeah. I think he's, like, you know, he's building and creating kind of a masterpiece. You got you ever see those guys on Instagram uh, who are, like, painters, and they yeah. paint upside down? So yeah. the whole time you're looking at, like, what the heck is this going to be? <laughs> like, know. looks just like smudges of black paint. Then they flip it over. It's, like, this yep. beautiful masterpiece, like, you know, Sean's in his creative bag right now, so he's like, you yep. know, relax, I guess, is what he wants to say. Exactly. No, those are those are always like the cockiest paintings, painters, too. <laughs> They're always up there, like, flipping their wrists and, uh-huh. like, doing all this stuff, like, spinning things around. Exactly. And it's like, okay, you're, you're a painter. You can cool it here. Um, one more thing that I wanted to touch on. Um, the Broncos are having a workout with um, a rugby player, hmm. which at first I was like, okay, this is weird. Like, strange things happen. I dug into who he is a little bit. I'm actually pretty excited. Um, so, Louis Reese Zamet, he's one of the top Welsh rugby players. He's only 23, so he's been like a prospect. He's made like a bunch of big plays. Uh-huh. Um, do you call them plays in rugby? I'm not really sure. Um, but the, the NFL has the uh, international player program, which essentially they take athletes from other countries. They have like a 10 week training camp at the IMG Academy. And then they put him at a pro day. They actually share UCF's pro day. 
Um, in Orlando, Zach could have gone. Luis Reese Zamet was like the top guy there. Like if, if you're there to see him, 31 teams were there to, to like watch these guys. He was kind of the guy everybody was most interested in. Um, six foot three, about 200 pounds. Like I said, he's 23. Um, he ran a four, four, three, but was disappointed in it. He said he's been in the four threes. He's hit the four twos at points. You guys say that all the time. Mm-hmm. Nobody's ever happy with their 40 time. Um, Nobody really knows what position. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like it's offense. Athlete. Exactly. It's exactly. Athlete. Yeah. It's like maybe receiver. Like, the guys who were there were saying, like, he looks like he can catch the ball pretty smoothly. Like, maybe running back. Running back would definitely be easiest. It's kind of a weird build. So, he's had, I think he, he's already met with, like, the Jets and the Browns. Okay. Um, has, like, the Chiefs and the Broncos coming up. I did a bunch of, like, weird research. Like, going through in, like, Wales, the country of Wales has its own Reddit. And so when he announced that he was trying for the NFL, they were just beside themselves. Mm-hmm. They're like, what the hell is this guy doing? Like, this is awful. Like, right before this big tournament that I don't even know the name of. It'd be kind of fun if Sean Payton got his hands on this guy. Hmm. Okay, there we go. I made that far. Um, thoughts? No, I think it would be cool. <laughs> let's, let's take a shot. Um, wasn't there another? There was another rugby player that came into the NFL, right? There was he one. He played safety or something. Yeah, I can't remember well, what right? happened. Yeah, there there was I think there've been five guys who come through this program. Okay. And who've like kind of worked out. Obviously the Broncos had Haggai Chisholm and Dubuisi. Uh-huh. Just pulled that name. The notable Broncos player when I was like, "Hey, who'd you give your shoes to?" Uh he was like, "Uh wait, what's that guy's name?" and had to ask a teammate cuz he couldn't remember all three names. Uh-huh. Um I can do it. Uh but, but so he was the Broncos guy last year. There've been like five of those guys who've turned into decent players. Um, like active roster players. And the big one is Jordan Mailata, yep. who I can't remember where he's from, but big rugby player, obviously, 350 pounds, which makes it a little bit easier for things to work out as a tackle. Yeah, I say let's do it. I think we're the uh, slowest sport to do something like that. Yeah. If you look at all the other ones, they've had a lot of success in basketball, totally. baseball, uh, hockey. Everybody's from Canada. I don't know if that counts. Mm-hmm. But... Um, <laughs> But I think it's, you know, I think long overdue. Um, I think there's been a lot of talented players that have, are from other countries that came here for high school, you know, and then played and went to the NFL. But there's a huge talent pool that we're not tapping into. So I wouldn't be mad giving this guy a shot. You no. know what I'm saying? 6'3", 200 pounds sounds like a, a linebacker. Yeah. In some regards. It sounds like offense. He he was like a big scorer. Oh, like, he was. He ran with the ball. He was like making guys miss. Okay. They have like these weird plays. I'll show you after, but like actually, Kai, I'll I'll send it to you, um, Alyssa. We can watch together. Um let's see, copy link. Okay, there's this one, and then I actually replied to this tweet with another clip, but I tweeted these out yesterday. They're in Broncos assignments. Um Yeah, I think it would be dope. It would be because if it works out, it's amazing. If it doesn't work out, I don't know. Not, I don't think he's getting drafted. You know what I'm no, saying? Exactly. Then, so like, if it doesn't work out, it's oh no! A, like you won five games. Yeah. You know, it's like you have nothing to lose at this point, so you might as well just see what happens. Um, yeah. No, I'm. It would also just be so much fun. And the way it works is you'd be able to carry 91, uh, 91 players in the off season, uh-huh. so he doesn't take a roster spot. You're able to keep him on the practice squad. You get 17th guy in the practice squad if he's their national guy. Yeah. Yeah. There he is. I don't know. I don't know the rules here. I know this one's. He's also, not afraid of contact. We know certainly that. Certainly not. Yeah. So we can watch that again. So apparently in rugby, oh, you like you can like kick the ball to yourself, and then. Uh, here's, I don't know if this is easier to see. No, it might not be. Oh, let me see. Yeah. He got some wheels. Yeah. He, so he kicked it, it. And then goes and gets it. Yeah. He like flies by all oh, these yeah, guys. He's moving. Bang! He gets on top of it. Yeah, and then there's the other one right below that one, too. Uh, get off me. And then he's just gone. He's a great athlete. Also, those quads are insane. Like, rugby, rugby players are just built differently than NFL players. They're usually like, yeah, yeah, they're smaller bodies, but they're, they have... Like thick. Bit, whoa. Whoa. Yeah, oh, God damn it. Yeah, I've been talking crazy about this man. Yeah. Um, no, 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 but they usually have, like, uh, big quads, but he looks like an athlete. Looks like he can run a little bit. Yeah. Also, so there was, like, a, a rugby version. There's, like, the F1 Netflix show, uh-huh. and there's, like, the golf one. Yep, they also the did a rugby one. one. 
And he was one, like, one of the stars of that. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so if anybody wants to see more, if he actually does become a Bronco in particular, um, that it would be a lot of fun. Like, especially with Sean Payton, with mm-hmm. the Taysom Hill stuff. Like, you want to run, like, option-type stuff with him? It'd be... I'd, I just need some excitement. And that would be an exciting storyline in training camp. <laughs> An exciting camp. piece for sure. All right. Um, we, uh, we, we're going to dig into the Broncos' biggest draft needs. But first, got to give a shout-out to our friends at American Financing. Um, if you're waiting to get out and shop for your new home, uh, this is actually the time to do it because the market is starting to warm up. And you want to get out there shopping, light, lock in your price before it heats up all the way. Um, interest rates are finally dropping. They're into the fives right now. Um, Todd's Todd's an expert. I heard you you were on the phone talking about like permits and all that stuff yesterday. Oh yeah, I was like, wow, this is like a real adult man right here. (laughs) I was about to go home. (laughs) Lexi got three different kinds of macaroni and cheese and we ate the SpongeBob mac and cheese the night before last. And so I like, while you were on the phone talking about permitting, I was like, okay, me and Lexi got to go figure (laughs) out, are we doing the Velveeta today or are we doing the, so just a little bit different there. So as Todd knows, though, mortgage rates right now are pretty good. Um, all of all of American Financing's mortgage, mortgage consultants are in it for you. They're, they're all salary-based. They have no reason to try to upsell you. They just want to get you into a good home. And they can do that for as little as $1,000 down. Um, they're a local Colorado company. They're also licensed in all 50 states. So wherever you are, they could be the answer for you. Um, they've helped thousands of customers. Um, and right now, they... Uh, they uh, they can give you a 10-minute, no-obligation phone call. Um, if you call uh, 303-695-7000, um, it could be the best investment that you can make in Colorado, which is a home. That's 303-695-7000 or go to AmericanFinancing.net slash DNVR. Uh, NMLS 182334, NMLS APR for rates in the five start at 6.799%. For well qualified well qualified borrowers, call 303-695-7000 for details about credit costs and terms. And if you haven't been to the NVR bar lately, you need to make your way down here. We have some really great events and you don't want to miss out on it. And right now, March Madness continues with our friends from Circa. Uh, the doors at the DMVR bar open at 11 a.m. Thursday and Friday, this Thursday and Friday. Lots of great specials on drinks on Thursday and Friday. And the, we also have bottomless mimosas on the weekends. Uh, we will be hosting live shows down in the bar. Come hang out with the entire DMVR crew. You can visit thedmvr.com for all upcoming events, including our Ass Watch Party on Saturday at 4 p.m. The DMVR bar offers third period happy hour doing all regular season ad games. Also, follow us on social at Denver DMVR underscore sports or go to thedmvr.com forward slash events to check out our calendar you don't want to miss it guys there's really some great events a lot of fun a lot of drinks yep um hank is usually drunk or something there so yeah you don't want to miss it's a good time it's true yeah this is another big weekend thursday friday saturday sunday basketball buffs buffs play saturday right Alyssa? Mm, i didn't see it i think so. okay uh, yeah i think it's saturday because caitlin clark got through last night it was such bullshit like the the fouls the refs were calling like I think the free throws wound up being 26 to five for mm-hmm. Iowa. And it's just like every time she almost, she tried to turn the ball over with like 50. No, it was even less. That. It was like 20 seconds left with a three point lead. And she's just like dribbling runs right into this girl in the backcourt, loses the ball. Other girl gets the ball and they blow the whistle. And it's like, Oh my God, which I get. They want to promote Caitlin Clark. Cause it's good for the sport, mm-hmm. but it sucks that that's what the buffs are going to run into because if you want to beat them by two, you actually have to beat them by like 15. That's the truth. Yeah. So happens. it's a good team. Actually. So that was the matchup last year. And it was like a four point game with two minutes left in the sweet 16. And then Iowa pulled it out. This year's going to be different though. All right. Before we get out of here, we want to hit our bet. Three, six, five, top five draft needs for the Broncos. Um, number one should be easy here. It's gotta be quarterback, right? Yes. Yeah, you don't have an answer there. An exciting prospect at quarterback would obviously be the dream here. Number two is where the board opens up a little bit. Um, Off the top of my mind, center could be a spot where you could add a guy. Corner could be a spot. Um, Tight end could be a spot. Receiver could probably be a spot. You know, you got your three guys, but some um, Marvin Mims, what happens in expanded role? Is Tim Patrick really back? Um, where, where Where does your mind go? I really think offensive weapons. So 
Yeah. You want to go tight end, wide receiver, I'm cool with either one of those. Um, I just think that's where we need the most mm -hmm. explosiveness uh, from this team coming up next year. So I think it's really important to have a good, you know, offensive weapon going into next year. And yeah, we've been talking a lot, lot talking a lot about Brock Bowers. I definitely wouldn't mind that move. Um, I think he'll be there maybe for us at 12, yep. whereas these top tier wide receivers probably won't. Probably not. So I'm cool with going tight end. Yeah. Yeah. I think tight end's a good answer because I think, I mean, you hope. Greg Dulcich figures it out. You know, Sean Payton said, like, I'm not necessarily going to call this like a crossroads year, but he wants to put all that stuff behind him, and hopefully he does. But you just can't bank on that. And when the other thing is, they just haven't had production from their tight end for mm -hmm. forever. It's not like it was a one year thing. It just the last time they had a tight end who was dominant was Julius Thomas, and maybe the last guy who was actually just like a plus tight end compared to the rest of the league might also just be Julius Thomas. I think Greg was nice. Okay, when when he was healthy. Yeah, when he was healthy. It was a, it was like a it was twelve weeks or something. And we needed him. We did need made him. big plays. Okay. Yeah, I think there's room to put Greg and a rookie on the field together. So that's a good one. Um, after that, I mean, center still jumps out. Corner. Corner's interesting because obviously you have Pat. Uh -huh. You have Jaquan in the slot, and they have Damari and Riley on the other side. I don't mind having those two compete, but Damari didn't play well last year. Riley couldn't see the field, so there's like some question marks. I wouldn't mind just giving that this year to those two and see if either of them can prove they're the guy. Okay. Um, safety, you're probably good. Yeah, there's no. Yeah, it's not a big, I not think you're for, okay. for like at this level of need. Yeah, maybe it's center. Maybe it's receiver. Maybe it's another quarterback. Maybe it is. Maybe it is receiver. I think we can do more with the centers on the roster now. Yeah. Like we don't actually need a center. Like having a good center is always a plus. Yeah. But I don't know if it like makes or break your or your old line. Oh yeah, especially. I mean, pass protection, two-thirds of the time, you're double-teaming somebody. Yeah. So you have the advantage. When you're running, like, those zone runs, you're double-teaming somebody. Yep. Power runs, maybe not double-teaming, but again. But you have the advantage because if he's, you know, he's shaded, so you got, you know, you're at an angle. It's not mm -hmm. head up. What you really need is a guy who can get you into the right protections and identify the mic, all those sorts of things. Yeah, smart guy. And everything we've heard is that the reason – they trust these two centers is because they think they're smart. Mm -hmm. So I'm willing to trust that they think those centers are smart. Should we go receiver here? Yeah, I think we should go receiver. Uh -huh. Then we can go center right after, though. Okay, let's go center four. Yeah, could you imagine if the Broncos got, I don't know how they do it, but just like an exciting young quarterback, an exciting young tight end, and an exciting young receiver? It's a hell of a draft. It would be awesome. That would be so much fun. Um, last spot here. I mean, defensive line is also a consideration. Yeah. Like, defensive line. I, people saying pass rusher in the chat, too, which I get. It would I kind of agree. Yeah, it, it's just so tough when, like, you look at the corners, and it's like, okay, the other starting job, you have Riley and you have Damari, and you have Jaquan the slot, which you trust, but, you know, if something were to happen to him or he doesn't play well, Riley's the backup, so it has to be Damari on the boundary. Uh -huh. Compared to edge rusher where... You've got Baron Browning, you've got Nick Benito, you've got Jonathan Cooper. But which, who? But who's getting you 10 sacks? None of them. Who's getting you 10 sacks and 25 pressures on the year? Like, we got need eight, that guy. Eight each, eight and a half each. We need that guy, you know okay. what I'm saying? That's we can go 10, edge, too. minimum for him. We just need, like, we need somebody that's going to call the protection towards him. Yeah. I think everybody we have now, I don't think any team is, like, game planning for them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're going to go and line up and see if their tackles can go one-on-one -on -one for them. So <clears throat> we need a dominant force up there. Okay. We can go edge for sure. Especially, I mean, it's also just like a premium position. Yeah. Same reason, like quarterback, you've got Stidham and Danucci. Center, you've got two centers who haven't played. It's kind of similar, except that quarterbacks are just way more important. So mm -hmm. they're number one. Let's go edge there. All right, that'll do it. Do we have any super chats, Alyssa? Uh, not today. Wow, no super chats. I guess that's going to do it. No super chats. Um, make sure that you guys give us a like on the way out. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with Zach. Um, also, maybe with me. Also, Oh, Baldy, our guy's coming back tomorrow as well. So stay tuned for that. Zach's back. Baldy's back. Zach and and uh, we'll see you guys then.
Like the mayor, 